So what I've got on the bench today then is a omnidirectional antenna that I've been trying to get hold of for quite some time. Now there are a few of these on eBay but uh, in my opinion they're kind of going for silly money. Yes when they came out I think around 2007 uh, to actually buy one of these direct from Cisco it did cost an arm and a leg but uh, these are second hand now so I actually picked this up for uh, £10 which I thought was quite reasonable for a uh, professional antenna that's been designed and made by a uh, competent uh, performer in that market so this is the uh, cisco air ant and it's the 1728 version and this is uh, an actual ceiling mount omnidirectional antenna it has a uh, small screw um, in the end there where you can actually screw it onto the uh, mount and uh, mount it directly to a ceiling but what is also nice is this is actually the same diameter as a uh, tripod mount so this antenna is uh, not a bad performer at all although it is a uh, ceiling mount so it's designed to be uh, mounted that way up it also works just as well in a uh, normal setting straight up like that in the vertical so a really nice antenna to actually get hold of if you can find one cheap enough so this uh, omnidirectional antenna then has a uh, db rating of uh, 5.2 and you can probably take that as gospel coming from cisco because uh, the amount of testing they actually do there but uh, it does have an rp tnc connection on the end so if you did want to use it with something like the alpha card that has a uh, sma you're going to have to uh, get yourself one of these little adapters or indeed crimp on an sma connection onto the coax here and the coax itself really does feel quality it's quite stiff but not too rigid and uh, this is a uh, genuine low loss microwave coax so we'll actually take a look at that as well now one of the reasons that i wanted to actually get hold of one of these is not just because it is a uh, nice little performing antenna if you can pick one up cheap enough but uh, it has quite a unique design inside here for the main driven element now I've seen some photographs online but uh, I wanted to get one of these myself so I can actually uh, tear it down and then get the measurements to possibly uh, reproduce this antenna because uh, you know for its size it uh, really is a nice performing antenna and uh, the unique driven element that's in here I think it's uh, really quite interesting so i'm not sure at this moment in time how i'm actually going to get into this it has a uh, end cap on the top here and uh, that looks like it's glued in place the uh, actual uh, pipe itself the tubing it doesn't feel too thick it's not as thick as say uh, some uh, plumbing pipe which i'll probably use to uh, reproduce this antenna so i'm going to try and get it apart from uh, the uh, base here now it does seem as if it's got some glue in there as well so I, i'm not sure if i can actually get it moving and uh, actually uh, part it from uh, its base here from the tubing or i'm going to have to cut in i hope i don't have to cut in but uh, we'll see how we get on so here's the main driven element of this antenna then now i've got it out of its tube i did have to cut the tube in order to get it out but i've done it quite neatly so i should be able to uh, attach it all together at the end there but um, what i'm actually going to do is remove this uh, foam protection around here so we can actually get in with the ruler and have a look at some of these measurements so now that we can actually take a closer look at this on uh, first glance it actually looks quite complicated but in fact it isn't it's extremely simple and uh, it's a design that's been around for a long time it's just that whoever's actually designed this has designed it with this uh, larger area here for the main driven element which i can only presume um, is in there to handle more data flow over the wi-fi because this antenna is for a uh, larger area set up say a hospital or a school or a uh, industrial area where quite a few people are going to be actually connecting to the access point but the measurements on this uh, antenna are exactly the same as uh, on one of these uh, longer range dipole antennas now the measurements are exactly the same as uh, one of these uh, longer range 
dipole antennas that I've shown on my channel how to make previously I've done a few videos on these and uh, basically it's, it's it's really simple you've got a quarter wavelength here which is 25 millimeters you've got a quarter wavelength here which is 25 millimeters you've got your loading coil here and then you've got a section on the uh, main driven element here that's uh, 70 millimeters long so effectively that's uh, exactly what we've got here if I get my ruler we can measure there it's actually 25 millimeters long this is the uh, ground plane of the antenna and then we've got this section here I know it looks uh, kind of unusual with uh, its uh, two side prongs going down like that but effectively that's also 25 millimeters so that's a quarter wavelength we've got our loading coil here and uh, then we've got our main driven element here which is uh, 70 millimeters long now if you're new to my channel or you haven't seen any of my previous videos on uh, making this kind of uh, dipole arrangement here you're probably thinking that 25 millimeters is not a quarter wavelength at 2.4 gigahertz but this actual design is called a uh, short dipole design or a uh, hertzarian dipole design and because of the way this is actually constructed its uh, actual measurements are shorter than uh, what is typical for a quarter wavelength in order for it to resonate at uh, 2.4 gigahertz the uh, ground plane here is effectively a uh, ballon and uh, the loading coil in the middle allows this section of the antenna to also be much shorter so it's only 70 millimeters rather than one full wavelength so when you get all those elements working together the actual wavelength needs to be shorter in order to keep it resonant at uh, 2.4 gigahertz and uh, it is um, typically a uh, hot topic on some of my videos people uh, have uh, got into uh, heated arguments with me and uh, actually post comments saying i don't know what i'm talking about because it should be around 31 millimeters but trust me if you actually google and uh, read up about uh, short dipole design or hertzarian dipole design it comes in at 25 millimeters so what I want to actually do then is try and replicate this now I'm not going to start to uh, get my ruler and calipers out and taking the measurements of each one of these uh, sides and uh, how long each one of these uh, two little wings are for instance and replicate the loading coil there's uh, somebody already gone to the effort of taking all the outside measurements and I'll put a link to his blog in the description but what I'm actually going to try and do is desolder this part away from this main ballon here or the ground plane because this is really simple to replicate we can just use some copper tubing and cut it down to uh, 25 millimeters and what I'm going to try and do is actually scan this and create a PDF document so uh, we can actually use that as artwork to uh, possibly etch this shape directly onto a PCB and then replicate this antenna that way so I scanned in the uh, driven element here and I've made this PDF document that you can download a link will be in the description and I've put one of these little uh, scale squares in the top corner here so you know that you've uh, got your scaling correct when you actually uh, print this off now you could use this as artwork for actually etching your own or you could possibly uh, use this cut it out and stick it down on some of this copper tape and really take your time with a sharp craft knife and actually cut it out of this copper tape I'm sure that would uh, work fine just the same so while I've got my driven element etching away in the ferric chloride I'll move on to the actual coax and how we can actually recreate this part of the antenna so I got a small piece of copper tubing and it's 15 millimeters in diameter across there which is very similar to the uh, tubing that's on this antenna although I think this is actually brass not copper but uh, what they've done here is uh, they've crimped it on there so they've got this uh, little metal disc that seems to sit on the top of this uh, brass tubing and uh, it's crimped on there so this is probably a custom part that they've had made for uh, this antenna so what I'm gonna have to do is come up with a way of narrowing this part of the tubing so I can actually solder my outer braid of the coax to it because remember all we're doing is recreating one of these but just on a uh, much bigger scale 
Now the only coax that I've got in the lab at the moment is uh, this uh, much thinner stuff than uh, what is used on the uh, Cisco antenna or semi-rigid coax so I'm going to use some of this. Now what I've got to do is narrow the opening down in this so I can actually solder the outer braid to it. So I've got one of these little crimp on connectors here and uh, what I'm going to do is cut this part away because I don't actually need it and I'm going to flatten it out and solder it to the side of the tube there so then I've got the uh, smaller opening in the uh, little crimp on connector here so I can actually get my uh, outer braid and solder directly onto that so I've pre-tinned all the edges then actually ground it back so it's nice and flat I've also pre-tinned this uh, little what's turned out to be a washer now but um, I've also pre-tinned all that round the edge there and also in the middle where I'm going to actually solder the coax on to make it a little bit easier later on. So I've packed the uh, tube with some masking tape so that will actually just sit on top of the masking tape now so it leaves me with both hands free to actually solder this on top. So I've got plenty of solder in there now and it's all molten so I'm quite happy that uh, it's going to set and be uh, completely held in place and uh, then what I can do is actually just uh, sand off any excess and get it nice and flat. So I've just tidied it up and ground it flat and uh, when we compare it to the original it's uh, not too bad at all. And one of the reasons I flooded so much solder in here just to make sure I had no gaps around the uh, circumference at all is because a uh, small crack in something like this that's so big can actually itself become a uh, slot antenna and the RF can leak out of there and could potentially interfere with the uh, main antenna itself so that's just something to be careful of when you're actually uh, producing antennas with such uh, big beefy pieces of metal like this is. So I've prepared my coax here and I've stripped back about 40 millimeters of the outer braid. Didn't need to expose that much really but I thought I'd leave myself plenty just in case. And uh, I've cut away most of that outer braid and just bunched up a small amount around there. So I've got it packed into that little hole so now hopefully I can just flood some solder in there and it'll be more permanent. And of course you want to be really careful just let it cool down in between because uh, there's quite a lot of metal here so the heat will build up and you don't want to melt the uh, dielectric insulator here. So here are the boards now that I've uh, etched them out I think it was a uh, much better idea to actually scan this driven element rather than trying to recreate it from measurements. And if I place the original over the top of one of these you'll see that uh, it's come out pretty much spot on. So I've got both antennas side by side because I just want to quickly show you something that really just came about as I was cutting this PCB out here. Now if we look at the original one yes it did have that roll of foam around it uh, at the top here and also around the base to protect it inside the tube but it's still extremely fragile it's easy to actually bend so if you did give this a big whack for instance you could potentially bend it in the middle there but uh, with the PCB one while I was cutting it out I thought if I leave the two little side bits here and cut out a slot for this uh, tube in here that can actually be epoxied in place like so and then we can just solder on the uh, signal wire there to the uh, main driven element and uh, from a design point of view that's probably uh, going to be a lot better than uh, this one from uh, Cisco. So I'm just getting ready to strip back this wire so I can solder it onto the main driven element so I've already made my cut around it with my uh, wire cutters here but uh, one little tip if you get some needle nose pliers and grip it below the actual cut then uh, gently pry it off like so holding it in place with the needle nose pliers and then there's no danger of actually ripping it out and then obviously you'll have to solder all this back on again. So I've got it actually soldered in place there and I've also epoxied around the tube in here as well so it's uh, pretty strong, a lot stronger than the original but I'm going to think now about having some kind of uh, plastic tubing as a housing. 
so this is the plastic tubing that I'm going to use it's actually got a 30 millimeter diameter it's a little bit bigger than what I wanted to use probably need to find something around 25 millimeters similar to the original but uh, what's nice about this is it's uh, some tubing from some old plastic shells so I've got these little end caps as well so it'll finish it off quite nicely and because it's black I don't have to paint it now I've cut this plastic tube in a little bit shorter than the original one was now I don't think we actually need it to be uh, as long as the original because the original is uh, designed as a ceiling fan and uh, it probably started around here somewhere with the uh, actual mounting bracket so the antenna probably starts around here so that's a good 150 millimeters from the uh, actual ceiling itself and uh, they probably worked out that that gave the best radiation pattern from uh, a ceiling fan point of view so I think ours can be a little bit shorter it doesn't have to be quite as long and just like the original I've just got some foam and I've got it held together with some masking tape so it doesn't actually rattle around inside the tube and what I did I've got this cheap foam here it comes from uh, some kind of packaging that I saved and uh, what I did I got the tube and uh, just put the tube over the top of the foam put some pressure down and it leaves a nice little imprint and cut round that and cut it in half and just hold it on each side with some masking tape so here is the uh, finished antenna and I just tapped out a uh, hole and thread there so I can uh, connect a small tripod to it just directly into the plastic it's doing a quite a good job there of uh, connecting a tripod too so I've also again a nice short piece of uh, coax there not too long so I thought what I actually do is give this a test side by side at the same time next to the uh, Cisco antenna so we can compare the signal from uh, the one that uh, I've purchased to the one that we've just made in this video so to test the clone that we've just made of the uh, Cisco antenna I've got both antennas uh, connected to the uh, same access point and uh, I'm scanning them both at the same time there and I've had it running for around 10 minutes now and they're both virtually identical the uh, one on the right is the uh, clone that I've just made in this video and the one on the left is the original Cisco one and apart from the original Cisco one just dropping down slightly every now and again they are both virtually identical signals so the one that we've just made in the video is performing just as well as the uh, Cisco one which costs uh, considerably more than the materials I've used to actually make it in this video now before I actually end this video I just want to point out something that cropped up with me actually uh, making the uh, antenna here that you've seen in the video and uh, normally in a video like this I make at least three or four antennas and I film it over a week to sometimes 10 days and uh, this one here on the left is the uh, very first one that I made with the actual tubing as well completely finished off i did make one which was uh, not enclosed in the tube and tested to see how that well that performed but this one i just went straight ahead after making that one and uh, soldered everything up put it in the actual tube and then i connected it to the alpha car to test it and i was uh, extremely disappointed with how it actually performed it actually only picked up about uh, six or seven access points and they were really low signal so i do know that uh, as i said in the video this design does look quite complicated but it's not it really is just one of those longer range dipoles with a uh, loading coil so i ended up uh, taking this to pieces again to uh, try and figure out why it uh, was not working and i'll get the macro lens out to show you why it wasn't actually working so now that I've got the macro lens on you can probably see clearly there there's a split in the uh, trace there on the copper and uh, this PCB board is really cheap stuff it's just what I use for prototyping normally but uh, I didn't notice that when I was actually putting the uh, antenna together the first time now one way around this would be to flood that entire trace with solder so we get a nice connection between them two so uh, again if uh, you actually copy one of my antennas and it doesn't work um, first off the bat get your continuity out and make sure you check everything because uh, nine times out of ten that would be what your problem is either a connection at your SMA or your coax or something like this where it uh, hasn't etched properly 
and we've got a break in the trays. So I hope you found that uh, video interesting and you have a go at making one of these yourself. I'm not sure whether the uh, original antenna was made in-house by Cisco or they just purchased somebody's uh, patent to uh, the rights to actually manufacture the antenna itself. I don't know, but uh, it's not such an uh, unusual design. It's, uh, you know, it's basically is a uh, one of those longer range dipole antennas. So if you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up. Any questions below and I'll do my best to answer them. And hopefully you'll join me on the next one.